what's going on guys i'm sure a lot of you guys are aware that in recent months especially during the pandemic a lot of classic games namely like playstation 3 playstation portable nintendo ds those games prices have just absolutely skyrocketed it's honestly kind of disgusting to see how high some of these games have gotten for example, like I was going through my DS collection recently and my DS collection is pretty huge and I valued the whole thing and it was insane how much it was valued at. I actually have a copy of a game called Sola Tarobo Red the Hunter that is sealed. I got it back in like 2011 or 2012 for like my birthday or something. I'm sure like my mom went to the store and she was like, I'm sure my loser weeaboo kid is gonna like a game like this. This looks like something right up a weeaboo's alley or something like that. And I got it and I was like, yeah, I have no intention to play this game and I just kept it sealed. It's like the special edition. I'm sure my mom paid like 20 or $30 for it. Maybe she got it off Amazon or something. Well, right now it's worth $430. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, $430 for some game called Solo to Robo Red the Hunter. Now, I did some research into it. Apparently, it's like a spiritual successor to some old Japanese game that people really like, and it was like a limited edition print run. I don't know the exact details, but I have it sealed. I'm just going to keep it sealed forever now. I didn't even know it increased in value like this, but yeah, that's happening with a lot of PlayStation 3 titles as well, and I want to take a look at some of the prices that are absolutely crazy, and obviously that's relevant to this channel. Talk a lot about a PlayStation 3 stuff, so unfortunately PlayStation 3 games are not backwards compatible in any way. Hopefully Sony can get on that sometime in my lifespan and actually get these games playable and, you know, at least give the option for people to download these games, but let's talk about some of these games. Like, some of them aren't that crazy. Right off the bat, I'll pull up the Sly Collection, which is priced at $47. $7.69 for a complete copy of the game, which, that's still crazy expensive. This game came out at $40, the collection, so to see it at $47 is just insane. It actually peaked recently at $58.75, and granted, some of these games are peaking really high right now because of everything that happened with the PlayStation Store and them uh, discontinuing the selling of those games, but for some reason, PS3 titles across the board just kind of went up in price. Except for like crappy games like Haze. Haze didn't go up in price, I don't believe. But yeah, games people want, the Sly Collection, that went up in price. Shadows of the Damned, the Suda 51 title is at $59. Like that is insane to me. And it peaked recently at $72, but it's been going down. $58 for Shadows of the Damned is so crazy. I remember renting this game through Gamefly and really enjoying it. It's like that over-the-top type of game that you would know Suda 51 for putting out. It actually was published by EA, which I find kind of wild for them taking the plunge and publishing a game like this but yeah $58 for that kind of wild okay this one really caught me off guard I don't know like maybe the fighting game community really likes the PlayStation 3 version of this game I know that's the deal sometimes Blaze Blue Central uh, Fiction is $107 for the PlayStation 3 version of this game recent sales have been like $130 as high as that it's at least selling for 100 bucks going back to November of 2020 so yeah that's kind of wild to see this version of the game so high in price Blaze Blue is always going to be a fighting game that's near near to my heart given that this was the last fighting game that I was really playing like at a competitive level but we're talking like calamity triggers when I was trying to play at a competitive level this is obviously one of the newer ones Tales of Zillia 2 you guys know that I dig the Tales of franchise Zillia 2 is up to $52 so that's kind of wild this is one thing that I really really don't like about the uh, lack of preservation of these games these Tales of titles are just getting lost in the shuffle lost in the wind I guess you could say because there's no way to really play them unless you emulate them through like RPCS3 but you're talking Tales of Zillia 2, Tales of Zillia 1, there's the Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World Collection, which that you can play through the Wii emulator, and that's a little bit more accessible, but you guys get the deal. It would be nice to be able to play these games on consoles themselves. Hopefully at some point, again, in my lifespan, we'll have like either collections be released or ideally just backwards compatibility enabled so people can at least download these games but Zillia 2 was a really strong game and uh it was even better than Zillia 1 and I love Zillia 1 so yeah one of those tales of uh titles that kind of gets lost uh with all of the other ones like Vesperia everybody loves everybody loves Berseria Zillia is kind of forgotten about because it's a relic on the PlayStation 3 essentially Ratchet and Clank Collection obviously with the release of Rift Apart this is seeing a hiked up price point at this stage of the game it is at $62 which remember this doesn't even include Deadlock this includes uh Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando, and then Up Your Arsenal. I was actually playing Ratchet and Clank 1 for a minute uh, right after I beat Rift Apart, and I was really
really kind of enjoying it, but that game definitely shows its age, but still, the collection for 62 bucks is wild. Folklore, a game that I often talk about, it's going for around $66 for a complete copy. Wild, given that this came out in 2007, and it wasn't one of those games that seemingly didn't do that well from a commercial standpoint, but the people that played it really did enjoy it, and I have fond memories of this game, but I played it when I was really, really young. But this was honestly one of those games that made me want to get a PlayStation 3. I remember looking at the box art, and I was like, dang, that looks like a cool next-gen title that would be up my alley, and I remember really liking it, but yeah, now I don't have a copy of it anymore, unfortunately, but now it's $66, and... Yeah, I ain't paying $66 for it. Let's just, let's just get that out of the way. I ain't paying that $66. So again, another one where it's kind of lame that this isn't being preserved. Yakuza Dead Souls? How about this? Obviously, Yakuza is getting a heightened uh, you know, popularity these days with the games being localized. This is $72. This is obviously the one with like the zombie spinoff. Yeah, $72 for this as well. Because I, I remember not enjoying this game that much, but $72 is just insane. But I can understand why this would be kind of a collector's thing to have and why that probably price would be hiked up from that standpoint. But yeah, still crazy because I believe that game is south of 10 years old. Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus to circle back into that. This was a standalone budget title that was released, I believe, at $30. And it is going for $57 right now. $57.91. So really, like, just about $60. Bucks. And I believe this game also included downloadable voucher for uh, Quest for Booty. Which it went Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction, then Quest for Booty, then Crack in Time. And then I believe Into the Nexus was the timeline order. I actually have a copy of this, uh, thankfully. Um, I looked and my code for Quest for Booty was unfortunately expired, but uh, I already had Quest for Booty on my PlayStation library, so it's not a big deal, but still. Uh, $60 for this is kind of wild, but again, this is probably seeing a jacked up price just because of the timing with Rift Apart just coming out and that game being pretty well received. Spider-Man Web of Shadows is $74, which that's kind of wild to me. I'm, I'm not too familiar with Web of Shadows. This one was one that I didn't play. I played Shattered time i remember that but yeah web of shadows is 74 dollars. splatterhouse is 91 dollars, which again that's wild um yeah 91 dollars for any playstation 3 game is kind of wild and i remember that game was received okay and obviously from an ip standpoint it's going to be pretty notable persona 4 arena ultimax is 95 40 um again a persona 4 fighting game i could see from a collector standpoint and the ip standpoint why it is seeing a hiked up price it peaked at 112 dollars recently so that's kind of crazy asura's wrath is 70 bucks i remember this this game getting quite a bit of flack because they kind of baited you at the end and made you buy the DLC, which, yeah, that, that was pretty lame. Capcom doing some old-school Capcom things, but Asura's Wrath was such an over-the-top game that from what you had, I thought it was a cool little title, but, yeah, the DLC structure of that game wasn't ideal, but $70 for that is wild. And then, uh, yeah, those are the titles I wanted to go over. I would highly recommend, if you're the kind of person that has been, you know, playing games for a long time and you haven't traded in a lot of your games, go through your collection because your collection might be worth an obscene amount of money right now based on just collecting being all the rage right now i know it's just not you know video games i know everybody's fiending for those pokemon cards and everything like that so you know it's just a wild time action figures i'm sure are going up in price but you know video games are what we cover so i wanted to look into that i would highly recommend using pricecharting.com if you guys do want to keep track of the value of your collection i'm not sponsored by them or anything it's just a pretty good tool to use uh so go check that out and if you're a guy with a lot of ps3 games and you know more of those japanese games the niche titles uh yeah your collection might be worth quite a bit at this point but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below does the collecting side of gaming interest you at all do you want to see more videos like this i'd love to cover you know some of the fluctuations of prices and some of the ps4 games are even going up in price a lot of the times it's the collector's edition stuff and things like that which it's not realistic for people to really have those so i don't really like covering that but you're talking about like I had games like The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky on PSP. That's worth a lot of money. E7 on the PSP is worth a lot of money. Like, these are just games that naturally came out, and I was like, okay, I want to play them. Like, in the case of Solo to Robo, that was just a random one that I have in my collection, and I don't even know why. Again, I believe it was from, like, a birthday or something like that, and my mom just thinking I was such a loser that I would like the game. But yeah, let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below, and again, if this does interest you, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.